Thank you very much, Ms. Minister Anada, um, both for those kind words and for hosting me here in Tokyo. And good morning to all of you. Thank you all for being here. Minister Anada and I just finished a very positive and productive meeting. While we've only been counterparts for a few months, this is already the second time we have met. Minister Anada has proven to be a dedicated, incisive partner addressing regional security challenges and challenges around the world, and I appreciate her desire to strengthen the relationship between our two countries even further. And already, she and I have taken important practical steps together. And it's been great for me to be back in Japan, which was my first stop uh, when I first became Secretary of Defense. I'm proud of everything we've accomplished since that initial visit. Updating our defense guidelines, continuing to modernize our alliance, and partnering to catalyze the region's principled and inclusive security network, all to help ensure a peaceful and prosperous future for the Asia Pacific. And today, our alliance, which we see as the cornerstone of regional stability, has never been stronger or more capable of contributing to security throughout the region and beyond. And that, th that's thanks in great part to the progress we've made in recent years. The most significant, of course, was last year when we adopted new defense guidelines that we've been implementing. These guidelines allow us to address new threats in this vital region around the world and across multiple domains, including newer domains like space and cyberspace. We're proud of everything Japan is already doing globally, of course, its peacekeeping mission in South Sudan, contributions to counter piracy efforts, and helping rebuild Afghanistan, to name just a few. But these new guidelines will allow us to do even more together. And as we expand what we're able to do together, we're also continuing to modernize how we do things together. We're deploying our most sophisticated capabilities to Japan, including the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter, Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense Ships, P-8 Maritime Patrol Aircraft, E-2D Advanced Early Warning Aircraft, and V-22 Ospreys. And we've established a second missile defense radar system here in Japan to strengthen our combined ability to defend against the threat posed by North Korea's continued nuclear and missile provocations. The minister and I discussed continuing to innovate within our alliance. We're also realigning our joint force posture in Japan, relocating Marines to Guam and reducing our footprint on Okinawa while maintaining the personnel and capabilities needed to keep Japan and the region secure. We appreciate the government of Japan's continued commitment to this project. Yesterday, I confirmed with Prime Minister Abe that the United States will return almost 10,000 acres of land in the Okinawa North Northern Training Area to Japan by the end of this month. That's the largest U.S. land return here since 1972. We're improving our ability to operate together. As the minister noted, and as I saw yesterday when I visited the Jap Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Forces helicopter destroyer ship, JS Izumo, which is a tremendous platform for Japan's work with American forces in the region and beyond, and which participated in Keen Sword exercise, the unprecedented exercise that Minister Inada referred to a few moments ago. And finally, the United States and Japan are also partnering with other friends and allies in the region to help catalyze the blossoming, principled, and inclusive security network here in the Asia Pacific. One aspect of this is how our alliance is part of several important trilateral mechanisms. The United States and Japan, together with Australia, as well as with the Republic of Korea, and also with India, where I'll travel next. These growing trilateral partnerships will help us partner together to provide security from one end of the region to the other. The U.S.-Japan-Korea trilateral relationship is a perfect example of that kind of growing cooperation. 
Just last month, our three countries held our second ever trilateral ballistic missile defense warning exercise. And our partnership will certainly benefit from the bilateral intelligence sharing agreement that Japan and Korea recently signed. Let me close by saying that it's a testament to the strength of our alliance and to the character of the Japanese and the American peoples that a mere 75 years after Pearl Harbor, my friend and counterpart, Minister Anada, and I can stand next to each other proudly and discuss how our two countries can strengthen the security of this region together. And in the coming hours, as Americans will remember those we lost on that day, long ago in history, we also reflect on how the United States and Japan have come together in the decades since to build one of the world's most enduring alliances. That's truly remarkable. Out of the depths of World War II, our nations have forged a common bond based on shared values, mutual interests, and a joint vision for a stable and prosperous Asia Pacific. And today, our robust alliance and our friendship demonstrate to the region and the world what can be accomplished when you not only share the hope for a principled and inclusive future, but also stand together to realize it. Minister Inada, I'm proud to stand with you and with Japanese allies to help preserve stability in the Asia Pacific, address challenges around the globe, and make the world a better place for our children on this day, every day, and long into the future. Thank you. I, I know uh, Jim Mattis very well. I've known him for many years. Uh, and I've, as I've said, I have a very high regard for him. And um, I am committed to an orderly handover of responsibilities in the Department of Defense so that my successor can hit the ground running. Uh, we have been doing that for 240 years in the United States. I'm confident that we'll be successful uh, in that regard. I'm committed to it. And with respect to uh, uh, our alliance here, uh, um, American interests in this region are enduring. And uh, our alliance provides many benefits to both of our sides. For, the, for us in the United States, uh, we share many interests in this region with Japan. Uh, including the need to defend ourselves against threats like North Korea. Uh, and we have in Japan a partner with very strong military capabilities who shares uh, uh, our concern and need to uh, confront those threats and a strong capability to, to do that and also to work with us around the world. I mentioned Afghanistan earlier, uh, peacekeeping, uh, and it's important to have allies uh, that have that kind of capability. Japan also provides the United States with uh, forward basing in the region, uh, which makes our forces more effective and allows them to respond rapidly to contingencies here. That's a benefit uh, to us. Um, Japan makes a very strong financial contribution to the U.S. presence here. And then probably above all, uh, we share uh, important values about what's important for peace and security, what's important in human life, um, and uh, our general interest in an inclusive and peaceful security system here in the Asia uh, Pacific. Um, so uh, America has a strong interest in a strong alliance here, and as I said earlier, uh, the U.S.-Japan alliance has never been stronger than it is right now. The next question from the U.S. side will come from uh, Bob Burns of the Associated Press. In your meetings with uh, the minister and, his, and the prime minister Abe also, what sort of uh, transition-related uh, concerns did you hear? Um, and also, Mm -hmm. I wonder how it is you can offer credible assurances here um, about the continuity of, of, of U.S. policy uh, toward Japan, given that uh, you're going to be giving way soon to an administration whose guiding slogan has been America first. Uh, obviously, I cannot speak for the administration that will come into uh, power in the United States. Um, uh, the United States has important interests in this region. Um, 
And uh, therefore, um, because many of those interests are shared with Japan, uh, we have a common interest in strengthening the capabilities of the alliance. Uh, just to speak about Japan's capabilities, um, the, uh, uh, Japan has a, an excellent uh, military, as, I, as you witnessed, because you traveled with me to visit uh, one of their amphibious uh, ships yesterday. Um, under the new guidelines that have been concluded over the last year, moreover, uh, Japan has, uh, is able to take on more responsibilities, both in the region and the world. Uh, and I think that's important uh, to note. Um, uh, it's also the case that the basing arrangements that we have here, um, uh, when we were talking about some of the details of those uh, earlier, um, uh, are, as I mentioned, ones that help U.S. forces to be more effective in this region and to respond more quickly to contingencies. Uh, in this uh, in this region, so there are very significant military advantages uh, to the United States in pursuing these joint interests to uh, to our alliance, and then of course we share common interests and values. It's very important to stick up for things like freedom of navigation uh, in this uh, region and freedom of coer from coercion, uh, and these are areas uh, that we also have. Uh, sh a shared vision. So shared capabilities, shared visions um, in, uh, make us stronger in pursuing uh, our interests uh, as the United States. Uh, with respect to the uh, nuclear umbrella, the second part of your question, Bob, uh, here, uh, as in our other alliances in the region, the entirety of the U.S. military capability is brought to bear in our commitment. Uh, to our allies, and that includes the nuclear umbrella. And as you know, we're taking steps uh, to ensure that uh, that those uh, capabilities are safe, secure, and reliable uh, very far into the future. The final question from the U.S. side comes from uh, Yuji Niwa of Kyoto News. Uh, thank you, Security Carter and uh, Minister Inada. Um, I want to ask uh, Security Carter and Minister Inada uh, about a nuclear deterrence to North Korea. Um, do you, um, Security Carter, um, do you support the adopt no first use policy to deter North Korea? Well, uh, first, as with respect to um, uh, extended deterrence, as I said just a moment ago, uh, our commitment to extend deterrence via the nuclear umbrella to our ally in alliance circumstances uh, is unchanged. And uh, we are continuing to build the capabilities to go along with that continuing um, uh, extended deterrent. Uh, and that is important uh, in, in a number of respects, but one in, in particular in the respect that you just you uh, cited, namely to deter aggression from North Korea, which is a strong, an interest we strongly share and therefore an interest uh, of the alliance. And so the nuclear umbrella will, conti will continue. And I don't know whether you wanted me to say something about it, th that or is that I'm happy to say something about that. That is an alliance uh, a, a decision of the, uh, uh, as any such decision uh, would be. And as we talk about future capabilities, we'll talk about all kinds of capabilities. But again, these are kind of, these are kind of decisions that we, like everything else we do, uh, we do as an alliance.